Hello, hello everyone. I just got home from a Costco run with my mom. I stocked up on a bunch of things and that's what I'm gonna talk about in this video, but I just have to tell you guys, and if you follow me on Instagram, then you saw this. When I got home, I pulled in the driveway, I looked in the backyard and I saw one of my cows, Mary, standing in our backyard, which is not where she's supposed to be. So I was gone for a total of like eight hours today meaning she was out the entire time I was gone. If you've watched my videos and seen where her pasture is, her main pasture is, where I milk, she's right on the highway and this is a busy highway. So for eight hours, one of my cows was out and did not go on the highway. She stayed in our yard, praise the Lord. And I was able to get her back in really easily. Actually just two weeks ago, one of my last videos, you probably saw this. I just started, now I don't even want to say halter breaking her because I haven't even had to use a halter. She's super gentle anyway. So all I've been doing is training her with a lead rope, just training her to go where I want her to go. And I've been milking her in different places around the farm. So she's gotten really used to me walking up to her with a lead rope. So when I saw her, I just calmly walked down to her barn, got the lead rope and was able to walk up and put it right on her and walk her back into her pasture, but that could have been a disaster. That is honestly one of my biggest fears with having large livestock, having cows and living near a highway, is one of them getting out on the highway. And yes, I would be upset if one of my animals got hurt, but what I'm more afraid of is them hurting someone else, causing a car to get in an accident or something and, and somebody getting hurt. So just, whew, I'm so glad that was avoided. And I actually figured out how she got out and it was just a major miscommunication some fence was taken out yesterday and all of us on the farm didn't really talk about it and so anyway it's fine it's fine now I'm back home and I went in nursed the baby he came along with me today on our shopping trip and now I have to unload my groceries and I I don't know if I'll pack them all away for I got some long-term storage stuff I don't know if I'll pack all that away but I want to just talk to you guys a little bit about Let's see, it's mid-September here. We are heading into fall and winter, so I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about that and what I'm thinking as far as preparedness and then just show you what I grabbed at Costco today. This was not on my agenda, um, but I missed my Azure Standard order cutoff this month. I cannot believe I did this. I had a huge order in. I really needed to get this Azure order in because I had jars, I had gamma seal lids for my buckets. I had things on that order that I can't just get anywhere. I can't get at Costco, but I, I missed the cutoff. I was so busy. I've been canning and preserving. You guys, you know, if you grow food, uh, everyone else has moved on to pumpkin spice in fall, but here in September, we are still in the thick of summer preservation. So that's why I missed the cutoff is I was super distracted. But anyway, I just told my mom, I had it on my list to get some food things wrapped up for preparedness in September and if it doesn't come from Azure it still needs to happen so we made a Costco run and I, I'm already feeling much better now that I got some staple items checked off of my list today all right I have a car full of groceries and some other things not all groceries of course I grabbed some treasures but let's start bringing all this in and I'll chat with you guys a little bit about my uh, September preparedness plan. Ernie, are you my helper? Are you mommy's helper? Hi, are you helping? When I am grocery shopping, I am somewhat picky, but I'm not super picky. I try to be flexible. So not everything that I buy is organic. Would it be nice if everything was? Yes, but if I find something that looks pretty decent and it's a really great deal and it's not organic, then I'm just gonna go ahead and buy it because here's the thing, I do not buy junk food anyway and I don't buy a lot of pre-packaged, like pre-prepped food. I am an ingredient shopper and I'm an ingredient prepper. I am now calling myself a prepper. I think if you go back to my video, I'll link it in cards, it's like one year emergency food supply. I specifically said in there like, I'm not a prepper, I'm just focusing on preparedness. Well, let's just shorten that and call me a prepper and get on with things because things in the global scene and in this country are escalating. Whether you realize it or not, they just are. You have mainstream news sources reporting things like the um, co economic collapse of Western Europe is imminent. You have high-ranking officials 
in Western Europe saying things like that. Putin said he is not going to reopen Nord Stream 1 pipeline that supplies Europe with natural gas. You have a lot of things going on on a global scale, and that's not even to mention the drought and crop failures we're dealing with in this country. Inflation is absolutely crazy right now. So even if you're the type of person who thinks nothing will ever happen, there will never be a shortage of food supply. It's all, we've always lived in this state of abundance, which we haven't. It's been a very short window in history that we've lived in this state of having such abundance with food in the Western world. But anyway, maybe you think that nothing bad will ever happen. There will never be a shortage of food. You can't deny inflation. So what if there was even a situation where it's not necessarily that there's a lack of food, but there will be. Um, but what if, you know, there wasn't a lack of food, but the $2 five pound bag of all purpose flour now costs you $20 because of inflation. I could absolutely see that happening. I hear some sources say that inflation is like at 8%. What a joke. I do all of our grocery shopping I have for, what, 12 years? Yeah, I've been an adult for how many years? About that many years. So I've been doing all of our grocery shopping for many years now, and I see the prices every time. We've always been on a budget for our entire marriage. There's never been a time where I don't look at prices. I always look at prices, and inflation is a lot higher than 8%, probably closer to between 20 and 30%, and it doesn't look like that's slowing down. I don't know if there's any remedy for that. Now, maybe you are wondering what my sources are for this. Um, I listen to and, and look at and read a lot of global news from a lot of different places. I do have one podcast that I listen to. I'm a little bit hesitant to tell you guys about it because it's what you would consider like an alt-right podcast and um, the theology, it's, it's Mike Adams. It is, um, what's it called? The Situation Update with Mike Adams, the Health Ranger. And I, I listened to that and he says he's a Christian and I, I'm sure that's true. Theology is very spotty, you guys. And it's very important to me that I don't share things that would cause somebody to go down a path of, you know, listening to false teaching. There are some things that he shares like calling certain things the mark of the beast that I do not think, right? Like I do not think that someone who got a certain thing in their arm over the past couple of years has the mark of the beast. So just had to throw that out there, but you guys check it out. I don't know if I will link that because I might get dinged or in trouble. I might even get in trouble for saying his name on YouTube because he's banned from YouTube, so. Hopefully I don't get in trouble. But anyway, that's one that I listen to, not necessarily daily, but I do listen to it pretty frequently because, and oh, these straps keep falling down because I untied them to nurse earlier and I guess I didn't tie them tight enough. But anyway, that is one that I listen to pretty frequently. And then I, any headline or piece of news that he mentions, I go and look that up because I don't want to just be buying into hysteria. So I go and look it up and make sure it's from a credible source. And pretty much everything he shares has been spot on so far. I know that I am not in Western Europe. I am in the United States. And the way that it's looking is Western Europe is going to be impacted pretty badly this winter. Like I said, I know that's not us, but that is a huge piece of our global supply chain. And it's unrealistic to think that we wouldn't be affected at all by that. So long story short, I think preparedness is always important. It's a biblical value. You look at Proverbs 31 woman, she traveled and brought food from afar and she wasn't worried about the winter because her family had clothing and they were prepared and had what they need. So preparedness is a value. If you read Bible stories, start at the Old Testament, read through the new, and you can read all kinds of stories about the value of preparedness. Anytime I mention this, it's important to me also to mention that we are not to live in fear. As Christians, it's actually a command. We are not to live in fear. So. Don't be afraid, be prepared instead. Be calmly thinking about preparedness leading into not only this winter, but winters to come. Because I think this is something as a society we need to get back to. For too long now, we have gone along with the trend of just taking for granted that we can go to the grocery store and get our next. But we have seen how things like the manufactured toilet paper shortage of 2020, I guess that was, that can create like total hysteria. So all it would take is one day the major news networks just announcing that certain things were not going to be available in the stores. People would panic, they would run out, they would buy all the things. And you don't wanna be caught up in that. So it's better, in my opinion, just to do a little bit at a time. Like I talked to you guys about in my last preparedness video. And another thing I mentioned to you guys, 
not only am I on a budget, <laughs> we're on a budget, also my husband is a little skeptical. Like he just is, does not get worked up about things. He finds a lot of things just very hard to believe. You know, he trusts me, but he's like, just doesn't get very excited about things. So I can tell you if I would have asked him to go out and buy a massive stash of food and preparedness items all at once, he would have said absolutely not. So I know that about him. So instead what I've been doing is when I do buy groceries, I just buy a little bit extra and I store that away. Now I'm gonna show you guys everything I got today and just kind of talk to you about what I look for as far as deals, what things that I am storing for long-term and then what things that I'm just buying for over the winter because those are two very different things. I got a big thing of organic coconut oil here. This was a really good deal. I mostly cook in animal fats like, um, you know, lard, tallow, butter, baking grease, but there are a million and one uses for coconut oil. So I figured this would not be a bad thing to have on hand. Um, it's got a shelf life of two years. So I will just put this in the basement. Coconut oil is not something that I use regularly. Once again, it just has a lot of uses. So I figured it would be good to have on hand. I got three bags right here of these uh, chocolate chips. I usually get dark chocolate. They didn't have dark chocolate. So I got semi-sweet chocolate chips. I got a really good deal on these are organic sprouted rolled oats. I got three big bags of these. Oats are a great item to store long-term. So I haven't decided, I'm actually running low on oats up here in the kitchen. So maybe I'll keep a couple of these bags up here in just our regular storage, but I'll definitely tuck at least one away in Mylar bag in a bucket, put it in the basement for long-term storage. One thing you guys, if you are maple syrup people, and we definitely are, Costco has the best deal by far. So their organic maple syrup here, this was like 12 bucks and Aldi, Target, everywhere else that I go, it's at least 15, usually higher. So I grabbed a few of these. Um, I grabbed some spices. Once again, not all of them are organic, but that's fine. A lot of these bulk spices, I am just going to put in my stash in the basement so they're tucked away and I have them if I need them. I got some vanilla, a lot of staple ingredients, things that I use a lot in baking and cooking. Big bag of walnuts here. Now, nuts do not store really well long-term. So that's not really something that you want to put in a Mylar bag and, and put in your long-term food storage, but I still use a lot of nuts and baking and stuff. So I just needed to stack up on them anyway. Um, as far as rice, I got a big bag of basmati rice, white rice stores longer than brown rice. So yes, I know brown rice is healthier, but white rice stores longer. So if you're trying to build up your long-term storage, then go for the white rice. All right. I got a couple packs of this organic uh, lemon juice here. Lemon juice is really important for canning and preserving. There are a lot of things that you can use lemon juice in. This has about a year and a half shelf life, so that's pretty good. I'll keep one up here and put one in the basement. I was really, really excited to get this huge bag of baking soda. This was $7.99. That is a really, really good deal. And baking soda is one of those maybe like in the top 10 items, if you were prepping that I would have, because you can use it for so many th things. You can use baking soda to brush your teeth. You can use it to clean your house, to obviously bake and cook. There are just so many uses to baking soda. Just Google like uses for <laughs> baking soda it has a ton of uses. So this is one to just stay stocked up on. My corn in the garden is not looking that hot this year. So I did get some canned Corn. This is something I almost never do. But if it comes down to a situation where food is in short supply, honestly, I don't really care if it's organic. I don't care if it's pre-canned. I just care that we have food. So it was a good deal. Grabbed some of that. I also got, uh, not on my prepping list, but some Pyrex glass uh, measuring cups. I've been wanting some glass measuring cups for a while. I can't believe I do not have glass measuring cups. The reason I wanted some glass measuring cups is so that I could heat small amounts of liquids or ingredients for baking on the stove instead of using my microwave. I do not like using microwave. In fact, if it were up to me, I would just get rid of it, but I don't quite think that would fly with my husband. So we have the microwave. I just like to try to get away from using it as much as possible. All right, another thing I picked up, this is a classic from Costco. A lot of people love the Kirkland's co uh, organic coconut water. Coconut water is a great source of potassium 
and it goes really well in adrenal cocktail. If you don't know what that is, it is just a sort of pick-me-up drink that you can drink throughout the day that gives you essential minerals and really keeps you nourished so that you aren't, so that your body isn't operating in a constant state of stress. And my favorite adrenal cocktail recipe is really simple. It is just orange juice, which I picked up, picked up some orange juice at Costco too. Um, this was a really good deal for three of these. I think it was like $7.99, but an adrenal cocktail is just a little bit of orange juice and then you want some sodium, so some good quality salt. I use uh, Redmond Real Salt and some potassium, some kind of potassium. So you could use cream of tartar. I like to use coconut water because like I said, that is a great source of potassium. So just mix those things together, sip on that instead of an afternoon coffee. An adrenal cocktail is really, really good in the afternoon as a pick me up and to keep you nourished and keep your adrenals functioning properly. It's also really good in the morning if like me, you are nursing a baby throughout the night and you feel a little bit depleted in the morning and need something to replenish. All right, moving right along, you can see I have a huge basket back here of flour. As I said, I missed my Azure standard cutoff date. I usually always order the central milling artisan flour from Azure standard. I love it. And that is what I use almost 100% of the time, but I needed flour this month. It was on my list of things that I wanted to add to my long-term storage stash. And Costco had a really good deal on these 12 pound bags of King Arthur all purpose flour. It was $7.99. That is a really, really good deal. So I got just shy of 100 pounds, 100 pounds of flour. A lot of that will get stored in mylar bags and in buckets in my long-term stash. And I'm actually running low up here in the kitchen too. So some of this flour I'll just use up here. Now, one thing you can do with flour that I think is really beneficial. So for every manufactured food, there is an acceptable level of contamination. There has to be, you guys. Think of the huge scale that food is produced on in this country. So all foods that we buy have a certain small amount of probably like bugs and debris and potentially eggs that could hatch. So one thing you can do is freeze things like flour. If you just freeze them for a day before storing them, then that kills any eggs that could go on to hatch. Now I know I mentioned this before, but it's just so worth mentioning again. Flour is a staple ingredient. If you have flour and water, you can make yeast. This is yeast. Most people these days call it a sourdough starter. But for all of time prior to, what, the 1940s or so, when yeast was first isolated and sold in packets, this was yeast. This was the only kind of yeast there was. And this was the leavening agent that would have been used to bake bread. It's just, in a sourdough starter, AKA yeast, is just flour and water. That's all this is. I have several blog posts on how to make and maintain a sourdough starter. I've got lots of sourdough recipes. I'll link some of those for you guys, but if you have flour and if you have clean water, you can make yeast. And if you have yeast and more of that flour and more of that water and a little bit of salt, you can make bread. And if you have bread, you can eat. So flour is a very important staple ingredient to be stocked up on. I know a lot of people don't like to eat flour these days. And a lot of people do have true gluten sensitivities. I'm not denying that. And I think that there are a lot of causes. We won't go into that today. However, I do think it's worthwhile to mention that when you bake bread or anything really with sourdough, a sourdough starter or wild yeast as your leavening agent, by the time that fermentation and rising process is said and done, your final product, your bread or whatever you have baked will be like 97 to 99% gluten free. So a lot of people that struggle with gluten intolerance do just fine with traditional baked goods baked with a sourdough starter. So it's just something to keep in mind. All right, I've gone through a lot of the stuff that I got today. I did get three big bags of cane sugar. We are not afraid of sugar in this house. Um, the body needs sugar to run and survive. So I know a lot of people don't like sugar, but I use a lot of sugar. Um, I also grabbed a couple bags, big bags of organic carrots. It was a really good deal. I do grow carrots in my garden but I've just never managed to grow enough for us to last a year. It's something we go through very quickly. I've already got all my garden spring carrots frozen. We went through most of them. So I figured it wouldn't hurt to grab a few more bags. And then last but not least, I grabbed a few other things that are not food. 
got a few flashlights. All of this stuff will stay unopened. I'll just put it in the basement with like our emergency supply stuff. Um, I got a couple things for school and just around the house, some scissors for the kids. Best find of all. This huge pack of Sharpies was like $11. That is a steal. And I'm going to hide these so that no one can find them because my Sharpies are always disappearing and it is very aggravating. So I've got to hide these somewhere really good. Uh, last but not least, pack of lighters. We've got a lot of lighters. I've got a lot of matches, but uh, this was like five bucks. So I'm just gonna throw this in the basement with my emergency stash of things. I also had a couple boxes from Redmond's on the porch when I got home. So I'll go ahead and open these up. Forgot what all I ordered, but I know I ordered a big 25 pound bag of salt. And that's what this is here. Salt is another staple food item that is essential, especially for homesteaders. Whether you're thinking about long-term preparedness or not, it's essential because I use so much salt in cooking and baking from scratch. Cheese making, you use a lot of salt in cheese making, in preserving, like canning. Um, if you cure meats, you use a lot of salt. I just go through a ton of salt. So I'm actually stocked up on salt up here in the kitchen. This big bag is for long-term storage. I am going to break this big bag up into smaller little Mylar bags and tuck those away in buckets in the basement. That way, if I would ever need to get in to that stash, then I can just take out like a little bag of salt at a time. And another reason I like packaging staple food items in smaller bags for long-term storage is that makes it really easy to trade. Now, if you guys didn't think that I was totally off my rocker and crazy before. Now that I'm talking about potentially trading salt and chocolate chips, you probably totally think that I am crazy. And you know what? That's fine. I hope it never comes to that. And you know that there are things that can happen on the global scale that we can course correct and kind of go in a different direction. That's awesome. I hope that is what happened. And you know, something I didn't mention earlier, if you guys have never checked out the World Economic Forum, I would highly recommend you do. It's a group of a lot of global leaders who are coming right out and saying that they want a new world order. They want things as they are right now to cease to exist. They want everything to change and for us to have things like a one world currency. They don't want people to have private property. They don't want people to own anything. They want everything to be provided by the government. This is not my words. This is not something I am making up. This is just me going to the World Economic Forum website and reading what they have said. I would recommend that you guys do that too. Always fact check. Fact check me. Fact check everyone you listen to. You never want to get caught up in something that is genuinely like misinformation. So just fact check me if this all sounds crazy to you and I think you will find it pretty interesting. It's not hard to see if you know what you're looking for. A lot of very wealthy people in this country, I'm talking very, very wealthy people, they are looking at these headlines and they are making moves. They do not want their money in a bank right now. They want to turn all of their cash into physical assets like land like gold and silver. I can tell you just in this small, tiny little area in Missouri that I live in, pretty recently there has been an individual who has come in and bought massive amounts. I mean, pretty much bought like entire towns in this small area. And a lot of people around here are saying, well, why would someone do that? Like what, you know, what's behind that? What is he interested in? Well, for me, looking at these headlines, obviously what he's doing is he's converting all of his assets into land. Because if you go and you look at some of these things that are being talked about on the World Economic Forum and you look at these global headlines, then you will understand it is not going to be wise to have all of your money sitting in a bank where one day it could just disappear. You are going to want to actually be able to physically touch and see your assets, like I said, in the form of land and things that you own. I mean, even food and self-defense. And like I said, if you were on the fence with thinking that maybe I was just a little bit weird and out there before, now I have definitely confirmed that theory for you, but that is fine with me. And if this kind of content is something that you want to see more of, just like occasional updates on what I'm doing as far as preparedness and what kind of things that I'm bringing into our home, how I'm getting ready for winter, please let me know in the comments because I try to make videos that you 
you guys ask me for, things that you actually want to see. All right, well, I'm going to wrap this up. Just a quick little note before I go. This is the first time that you're hearing about any of this as far as food shortage or things happening on a global scale. And maybe you feel overwhelmed and wonder where you should start. Just think of these three things, just the essentials. If there was a power outage or some type of situation where you wouldn't have all the things that you usually have, you're going to need clean water, you're going to need food, and you're going to need a heat source. Just focus on those three things. I've talked about those things before. I have a Berkey water filter. It's amazing. The filters last for several years. It can filter gallons and gallons and gallons of water. I'm fully confident that if there was like a brief off grid type situation where we didn't have access to clean water, I could get all the clean water we needed for cooking and bathing and just any drinking, anything we need out of our Berkey, out of the current set of filters we have in there. As far as food, that's what I'm showing you guys today. That is what I'm working on building up right now is not only just my uh, short term food supply, just to get us through this fall and winter so I'm not constantly running to the grocery store but also my long-term supply that will last 8, 10, 20 some things if they're stored properly last like 20 years and then the last thing is a heat source you're gonna need some kind of heat source to stay warm um, through the winter and also to cook on you guys can see behind me where where are we we have a wood stove in our living room um it does a pretty good job at heating pretty much our whole house and it does have a small cooktop it's not like a full size wood cook stove but it has a small cooktop to where i could easily make the meals that i needed to make on that and i've also watched videos on how to make bread on a wood stove with a cooktop i feel like we have the basic things that we would need we definitely don't have everything that i would like to have but that's fine i like i said i I'm not gonna stress, I'm not gonna worry because that is actually a sin to live in those states. Of course, we all have things that cross our mind that seem worrisome, but we are called to choose not to dwell on those things. So I'm not gonna dwell on it. I'm not gonna freak out about it. I'm just gonna take little steps every day to do what I can with what we have. All right, guys, well, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit the like button, click subscribe. I make new videos every week on motherhood, homesteading, and life on our farm, and I will see you guys next week.